So I don't think there is consensus on when electrical signaling will run out of steam and when it will start actually limiting the communication between chips and processors. I think in today's systems, we already have some signals running in gigabit per second range uh, over uh, copper wires or traces. And at these speeds, um, we are already seeing the limitation of uh, electrical interconnects. And of course, the impact of these limitations can be um, managed or reduced with improved design or improved materials. And we have researchers at Intel that have been doing a lot of studies and based on the best information they have available to them now, they believe that the uh, electrical signalings could be uh, scaled to 20 gigabit per second. Uh, over distances um, of a few inches to maybe one to two feet, uh, but probably not much faster or longer distance than that. So the question would be, you know, when will we actually get to those speeds? And it would be likely sometime next decade, maybe early to mid next decade. And we better be ready, you know, to address the potential uh, communications bottleneck when that time comes. And we believe that, you know, the best option, the best solution is um, optical signaling using devices based in silicon. Optical signaling um, has a lot of advantages that are well known. Optical communications in general has a lot of advantages. Uh, and I think the two biggest ones are, you know, the huge um, bandwidth capacity and the low loss transmission. And today, you know, in a lot of the communications um, links that we see, uh, they are already optical. You know, ranging anywhere from, you know, ranging from telecommunications uh, down to within data centers. And a lot of the devices used in those solutions are based on exotic and expensive materials like indium phosphide and gallium arsenide. And uh, the cost, you know, for those applications, those uh, communication space is not so critical. But you know, in order to bring communication, optical communication to the to and around the PC, um, cost is uh, very important. And that's where silicon photonics could have a real opportunity, a real advantage. And silicon photonics is the science of you know making optical devices using um, everyday silicon, and in um, you know existing CMOS uh, fabs using existing processes. So for these applications, you know it's very important not to only consider performance but also cost. There are two key challenges uh, with uh, silicon photonics. Um, they are the realization of uh, silicon emitter, light emitter, and um, high-speed uh, silicon modulation. Uh, the challenge with uh, actually demonstrating a silicon emitter has to do with the fact that bulk silicon, bulk crystalline silicon, has an indirect band gap. And this material property makes radiative recombination or light emission um, extremely difficult. The likelihood of this process is uh, fairly, you know, rare, I guess. Um, so there are a lot of research going on right now. Um, people look at ways of circumventing this material limitation with silicon. And two approaches that they take are um, spatial confinement of electron and adding optically active dopants to silicon. And the other piece of the puzzle, of course, is demonstrating high-speed silicon modulation. And, and that is the focus of my work. And the challenge with actually demonstrating very high-speed uh, modulation in silicon also has to do with limitation um, imposed by the material itself. It does not exhibit appreciable electro-optic effect. So prior to our work, um, researchers have demonstrated silicon modulators and silicon modulation, um, but their devices, demonstrated devices, are relatively slow. So what a modulator is, um, what it does is it encodes data onto a continuous beam of light. So, uh, you know, in order for you to uh, be able to transmit or encode more information and more um, data, 
you need the modulation speed to be very high. And so what people have demonstrated, you know, uh, before us, 20 megahertz-ish bandwidth is a great um, device, but they, are not, they don't have a lot of practical applications. And so our approach is to use free carriers to change the property uh, of light, uh, or change the optical property of silicon. And this approach of using you know, free carriers to change the property of silicon is not novel in itself because other people have done it before. What is novel about what we do is that we, um, is the design that we use. Uh, we've been able to design a device that can, um, uh, I guess, move the free uh, carriers extremely quickly, extremely fast, and thereby, you know, modulating or modifying the silicon properties very quickly. And so in 2005, we demonstrated a one gigahertz modulator. And after a cycle of you know, um, device modification process improvement, we've been able to achieve 10 gig modulation a year later in 2005. And right now, we are looking at you know, further improvements of device performance. And we hope that our new device will have you know, faster speed, smaller size, and even um, better um, in terms of power consumption.